Hey, this is Match once again. What about you in the video? This is another paid request. This time from my good friend Efri. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. PayPal is usually the best bet. Uh, Efri wanted me to do a comparison, a versus. Which do I like more? Charles Bronson or Liam Neeson. Now, I had to think about this for a bit because I do enjoy both. And I didn't grow with Charles Bronson like other people did. Now, I did grow with Death Wish 3, but to be perfectly honest, for the. It wasn't until I was in my probably mid late 20s that I found other Charles Bronson films. Um. Uh, Actually, hmm, no, that's a lie. That's a lie. It was in my 30s, actually. Because, like I said, the only one I'd really seen was Death Wish 3, which I love. I would say both their categories, probably Death Wish 3 is my favorite of both careers. But again, I grew up more Liam Neeson. Whether seeing him back in the day in films like Troll and Dark Man, to see him pop up from time to time to the point of Taken and non-stop and some of those movies and then later on I would see more Charles Bronson's career especially when he was with Canon Films and enjoying uh, a lot of those films too now I think most people that see this title they would automatically see Charles Bronson I can definitely understand why they would say that Charles Bronson definitely when I looked at his Canon Films like I looked at this list there's about six movies at least not just canon, but I've done about from the 80s to when he passed away. So just go like from 1980 to when he passed away, and then Liam Neeson from like Taken 2008 to today. Technically, there's probably more Bronson films I like than Liam Neeson films. But on the flip side, Liam Neeson, I do think, is a better actor. I think he's better on an emotional core. I think he did a bit more in terms of drama, in terms of showcasing those emotions and a variety of emotions. I do think Charles Bronson works for who he needs to be, but I don't think he was the most varied in terms of an actor, whether in terms of comedy or in terms of to get those emotions of sadness and such out. For the most part, Charles Bronson kind of had that one state of affairs. I'm not going to say he was a bad actor. It's just that he worked for that tough guy element. But I would be lying if I said... I do think Liam Neeson was the better actor. I still think he's the better actor of the two. But on the flip side, Liam Neeson, he's done a lot more movie roles... But he's done a lot more bad movies. Like, yeah, if I look from 1980 to now, these are the films of Charles Bronson's career. Borderline, Cabo Blanco, haven't seen either of them. Death Hunt, Death Wish 2, I like. Ten to Midnight, I like. The Evil Dead Men Do, I like. Death Wish 3, I love. Murphy's Law, I like. Assassination, yeah, subpar. Death Wish 4, I like. Messenger of Death, could I get into. Kinjite, I hated. The Indian Runner, didn't see. Death Wish 5, wasn't my cup of tea. And the Family of Cops TV movies, I didn't see. But there's still six movies I enjoyed. While I looked at Liam Neeson, I loved the first Taken. But then, Afterlife which was, I thought, a very lame movie with Christina Ricci, Justin Long were in it. Clash of Titans, I don't mind, but the A-Team, I hated. Unknown, eh, wasn't big on it. The Grey, a lot of people love it. I never liked the film. I thought it was incredibly overrated. Wrath of the Titans, I thought it was a bad sequel. Battleship, laughable. Taking 2, horrendous sequel. Taking 3, another horrendous sequel. The A Million Ways to Die in the West. Very unfunny comedy from the guy who created Family Guy. But then I really like Nonstop. I really like A Walk Among the Tombstones. Run All Night, 
didn't really care for. Uh, stuff I didn't see, to be fair, a Christmas star, Operation Chromite, Mark Felt. The commuter I liked, although it's pretty much nonstop on a train. Pro Pursuit I thought was very interesting. I, I liked the twisted. I thought that was kind of a clever movie, Cold Pursuit. Men Black International, fucking awful. The Ice Road, awful. Was it Black Light or Memory I saw? Now I was getting to the point that it feels like I'm watching the same film over and over. And Charles Bronson, like, I could see a title and tell you immediately what that film is. And that's the thing is that while I do think Liam Neeson is the better actor, I think he has the more emotional range, and the films of his is of his I like, I really do like. I gotta give it to Charles Bronson. I, I have to give it to Charles Bronson. Because while I do like Tate in and I do like I mentioned Tate was a nice surprise. I heard so much hype about it. But I'm like, okay, does it really live up to the hype? I'm like, no, this was really good. This is one of my favorite action films of that era. I really did enjoy it. And Nonstop, I thought, was one of the better movies to take place in a plane. I liked the way it was directed. I thought it was a nice thriller. I liked the way the plane was utilized. And again, Liam Neeson did a great job. The Commuter, it derails a bit in the third act. Literally and figuratively, but I still like the commuter. Welcome on the tombstones got better on a second viewing because I wasn't sure what to make of it the first time. But I thought, oh, this is actually a pretty good story, well acted, good cast. But like I said, you, then you have your. I know people like these films, but I wasn't a fan of Run All Night. I wasn't a fan of. Uh, like, I did. Uh, the Marksman, Honest Thief, they look. Black Light, they look really. I think it was Memory I saw, and I wasn't a fan of. I think that was it. And I was getting to the point that they seemed to run together, almost like Steven Seagal films started running together. I'm talking about like later Steven Seagal. But again, you look at Charles Bronson. Death Wish 2, I actually like more than the first Death Wish. I'm not a fan of Death Wish 1. People get mad at that, I don't care. I think the first Death Wish is fucking boring. I actually prefer the remake with Bruce Willis, and I prefer the sequels. Death Wish 2, I thought, was a bit tighter paced, and the music really helped in that film as well. And I like the bit with Lawrence Fishburne getting shot through the boombox. I do like the line, You believe in Jesus? Yes, I do. You're going to beat him soon. Uh, 10 to Midnight had a little bit of a slasher element where this guy is killing these poor women and Charles Bronson as a cop is doing, he's doing some dirty tactics to try to keep him out off the streets. But then his partner, played by Andrew Stevens, finds out because, hey, this is not the right way to do it. But then the killer goes after his daughter, Lisa Albacher, who I remember from Burial Scott 1 and Leviathan and Charles Bronson. You just, uh, pretty much taste matters in his own hands. The whole fucking world's going to hear from me. No, he won't. Shoots him in the head. Probably goes to jail. Maybe for the rest of his life, but he did what he thought he had to do. Uh, the Evil That Men Do, I thought was a nice... That's actually one that I think is a bit more underrated in Charles Bronson's filmography that not many people talk about, but I thought that was a nice welcome surprise. Death Wish 3... Death Wish 3 wins the argument in a way, too. It's kind of like, I do think Liam Neeson is the better actor, I do like some of his films, but... Liam Neeson didn't do Death Wish 3. <laughs> Death Wish 3 is Death Wish 3. And that kind of... The first thing I saw this, I went, you know what? I might not have grown up with Charles Br I might have grown up more with Liam Neeson than Charles Bronson, but Death Wish 3 wins it. It's got the Will Be Madden. Charles Bronson kills like a hundred people. You got that great music that was in Death Wish 2. He killed the Diggler. He gets this big fucking machine gun. 
I mean, as much as I like Taken stuff, Liam Neeson never had that R-rated, full-blown, almost like Rambo epic style movie. This was, in a weird way, Charles Bronson's Rambo, or Rambo 2, I should say, Rambo 3, where it just go old, full tilt, ten fill booty, doing traps. What's that? It's his teeth. <laughs> Doctor people's teeth out with traps, and their the teeth are stuck to the board. Uh, Death Wish 3 alone kind of wins the argument. But, you know, I like Death Wish 4. I don't like the way it ends because, you know, he did warn him. He got the girl killed. But other than that, I wish the ending was different. I would like Death Wish 4 a lot more, but I still like the film. And to be honest, in that time period, he made less bad movies, in my opinion. Like, of the ones I've seen from 1982 to 1994... I mean, I'm not big on Death Wish 5 or Kendra Day, Messenger of Death, Assassination, but not as many as Liam Neeson. The Ice wrote really fucking lame. Putting his name and stuff like Men in Black International and Daddy's Home 2 and Ted 2 and Taking 2, Taking 3, Million Days to Die in the West, Wrath of the Titans. Battle shits. It just... I did it. The guy wants to work and... Also franchise wise. The Death Wish franchise is a better franchise than the Taken franchise. Just Death Wish 2, 3, and 4... You want to say the first one? Oh well. But there's, there's more good Death Wish movies than Taken movies. So Charles Bronson... Had less bad movies... More, this is, all sub, this is all opinion, but you all know that. From the 1980 to when he passed away, I think Charles Bronson had more good movies, had less bad movies, had a better franchise, while Liam Neeson did more movies, but he had less good movies than Bronson. He did more bad movies of putting his name in shit. Again, like, Men in Black International and fucking stuff like that. And while I do think he's a better actor, he's taken a lot of these really routine, rudimentary, subpar roles that either don't have the budget, they don't have the canon group behind them, so, at least with Charles Bronson, when he did movies, he didn't have crappy CGI like the Ice Road to fill the, the action behind you. It's like, well, this is what Charles Bronson can do. He can shoot and stuff. That's what Death Wish 3, it's over the top. Yes, it's silly, but it's still all done for real and practical. And it makes it still makes it in a weird way more believable than seeing a bunch of CGI shit like the Ice Road. Or, Bronson, I would say, knew what he could and couldn't do. Later on, Liam Neeson's still thinking it's 2008 taken, where he can move pretty well, but if he tries to do a fight scene nowadays, there's a lot more editing, there's a lot more editing techniques to show that he has aged, he has slowed down, he cannot do as much as he thinks he can, or he knows that, and these directors think, hey, keep following the taking train, we know he can't do it, but we'll hide it with editing techniques, or we'll speed up the camera. So, I would actually prefer Liam Neeson either do film, more films like Walk Among the Tombstones, or know his limitations and have good directors give him really interesting stories, or really quirky, crazy stories, or... Like, it was cool to see Charles Bronson do action horror types like Ten to Midnight is a little bit like that well not horror but just a little bit of that you know, serial killer thing oh yeah Murphy's Law I didn't mention that Murphy's Law that's another good one of Charles Bronson that I liked where it becomes this sort of like little buddy team 
with uh, I want to get the actress's name. Car uh no, not not Carrie Stodris, that's uh, Kathleen Wilhoyt. Which right sometimes like her dialogue would be iffy, but uh, on the flip side. There's some aspects of her I did like. And I'm not saying these are flawless films. Like if I did a list of like my favorite of both of their filmography put together, I would say like Taped In and Nonstop would be up there. Like I would say for me personally, Taped In and Nonstop I liked more than most of these Charles Bronson movies. Just Taped In Nonstop I really enjoyed. Like let me put it this way. In the top five of Bronson and Liam Neeson put together, Taken and Nonstop would be number two and number three. But they're not number one. And you know what number one is? The Will of the Magnum. So, because of a little bit more consistent in terms of quality, doing you know, not as many bad ones and more good ones not putting his name attached to every other fucking thing again Battleship and fucking Men in Black Natural like Liam Neeson did that kinda your stock goes down a bit I did you wanna work I get that but it's said like, okay well your name's attached to that doesn't mean it'll be a good film Again, if you ask me which I think is the better actor, I think Liam Neeson is the better actor. But if you asked me which made more of an impact on action cinema, people would see Bronson. If you're saying which had a bit more, and they're kind of call it the the last act of their career or the second half of their career, Bronson just had more movies that were satisfying so I gotta give it to Charles Bronson I think my lot of people would say the same so that said thanks for watching take care and we'll see you guys later bye bye